Hello everyone, my name is Priyanka Goswami, Assistant Professor of GL Bajaj Institute of Management Research, Greater Noida. Today we are going to discuss lecture number 11 and topic is organizing and, and staffing. In the previous lecture we have discussed what is organizing, what are the, uh, what are the uh, importance of organizing and after that we have also uh, started that what types of organization like line organization and line and staff organization. And this uh, slide on this PPT we are going to discuss organization structure, decentralization of authority or we can say the departmentation. Today we are going to cover these topics, number one is introduction of organization structure, types of organization structure and decentralization of authority. Let us start with the organization structure introduction. An organization's organizational structure is the group of rules, roles, relationships and responsibility that out outline how your company's activities are directed to meet its goal. Organization structure is kind of is a, is a type of framework or is a type of framework which is based on the rules, roles, relationship and the responsibility which outline in the organization and on the basis of that when organization make a structure or the hierarchical framework that is called organization structure. That organization structure basically identifies that what are the formal relationship among the people who is the supervisor, who is the subordinate, who is, who is the one who lead whole organization. So, this kind of, uh, this kind of information we can basically get from this organization structure. It also governs the flow of information through the levels of the company and outline the reporting relationship among mid-level staff, senior management, executives and owners. We can say that through this organization structure, we can basically identify that how the information will flow. That means, if the information needs to flow from top to bottom, that how with through which which person he will that information will flow. And in the same way, the through organization structure, we can also identify that which person will report to which person. So this kind of idea we can make from organization structure. It clarifies the formal relationship of individuals in the various position within the organization. Through, line, through organization structure, we can basically identify that what is the formal relationship among the people like who is the supervisor, who is the subordinate, who is there to who lead the whole department, who is the head of the department right. So, this kind of uh, hierarchy or this kind of formal relationship we can identify through organizational hierarchy. Why do we need an organization structure? That means, what is the importance? What is the importance of making organization structure or the hierarchy of the whole organization? It clarifies the responsibility of the members. Yes, through organization structure or by seeing what is the, uh, the by seeing organization structure, uh, the one can uh, when identify that one, the one can identify that who is uh, I mean for which responsibility who is responsible right. So, it basically clarifies the responsibility to the members. It frees the manager and the workers to concentrate on their respective roles and responsibility. As we know that uh, organization structure clarifies the responsibility of the members in the same way they the manager and the and his uh, subordinates can have uh, the clarification in their mind that for this particular responsibility they are responsible. So, obviously through organization uh, structure they, they can be more clear and they can be more uh, focused uh, on their own uh, responsibility rather than others. It coordinates all organization activity. So, there is a minimal duplication of efforts conflicts. So, we can say that organization structure basically helps the organization employees uh, to avoid the duplication of, of efforts. Why? Because every employee in the organization knows that for what they are responsible. So, obviously, the duplication of efforts will not be exist in the organization. If there is a cl clarity, if there is a transparent uh, uh, transparency in the mind of employees, for what they are responsible. So, obviously, duplication of efforts will not be there or any kind of conflict may not arise in the organization if there is a uh, organization structure. It avoids overlapping of functions. Yes, we can say that if people are very clear for this particular kind of responsibility, I am responsible. So, obviously, the other work, he ha I mean the other person cannot give his own responsibility to the another member right. So, obviously, the overlapping of function will not happen in the organization structure like if if organization structure is there, if there is a whole framework of whole organization and, and everyone is very clear that for what they are responsible. So, obviously, they can avoid this overlapping of functions. 
it helps to allocate organizational resources and if we can say that if peop, if it is clarified in every man's uh, everyone's mind that for what they are responsible so on the basis of their responsibility manager uh, manager will get, will be convenient to allot the resources to the different different people and or the, to the different different department so organization structure basically help them helps the manager manager to allocate the organizational resources to the different different department or to the certain people it establishes formal line of authority yes through organization structure uh, the line of authority is very clear that if the if the complaint or uh, if we can say if the if the suggestion is has i mean uh, if the suggestion has to uh, go i mean if a uh, suggestion it has to uh, give by the lower level people to the upper level people so how it flows that means through which which person the the suggestion will flow to the higher authority so through organization structure we can we can i mean the every people or every people who exist in the organization will be clear that what will be the formal line of authority type of organization structure if i talk about type of organization there are three, three types of organization functional divisional and metric structure let's start with the functional structure of an organization the functional structure is based on the organization being divided into smaller groups with the specific task or the roles like in the functional organization or functional structure of an organization uh, when organization is divided is divided on the basis of specialized or on the basis of specialization or we can say on the basis of specific type of roles or task that is functional uh, structure of an organization a functional organization is common type of organizational structure in which the organization is divided into a smaller group based on the specialized functional area that is important that means functional structure uh, is a type of structure where whole organization is divided on the basis of specialization or on the basis of specialized area like if the organization is divided on the basis of or the departmentation uh, is being uh, divided on the basis of um, uh, marketing hr finance so what is that that's a functional structure of an organization the functional structure is the most commonly used and work best for small businesses and for large organization that produce is high volume of product at low cost that mean we can say that this kind of organization is majorly is 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 basically popular type of organization because every organization uh, either small or the large uh, divides on the basis of on the basis of functional structure but but one specification is very important to build up organization uh, like functional structure is that that if there is a same kind of product is going to make by a person or by a uh, by an organization so obviously this functional structure is suitable but if there is a large uh, segment is um, uh, there or we can say that organization produces or deal with the large segment or different different segment of product so obviously this functional structure will not be suitable then they have to go with the different structure so where it is this kind of structure is basically useful uh, for the organization who is uh, smaller in size or we can say if they are large in size so they have to produce um, they have to produce uh, one or two variant of products uh, variant of products with the large scale so th there this kind of functional structure will be uh, more suitable so, and if i talk about the diagram so this kind of structure will be made this functional structure in functional structure ceo the, here you can see that departmentation is uh, or departments are divided uh, on the basis of specialized area like marketing sales services so these are the different areas divisional structure of an organization divisional structure of an organization is the organization where whole organization is divided on the basis of product or on the basis of uh, we can say uh, geographical areas so if organization uh, divides or if there is a departments on the basis of on the basis of product or on the basis of geographical area like you uh, like if suppose if one entity if one organization is having a different branch in different different area so that kind of structure is known as divisional structure where because and all the all the uh, uh, different branches will have a uh, different uh, manager right who who zonal we can say that the zonal manager or the branch manager so this kind of uh, position 
division uh, exists in the organization. So, uh, that organization is known as divisional structure. So, divisional structure divides the functional area of the organization. Each one of them is equipped with its own resources to function independently. Yes, if, if I talk about this divisional structure, here all the resources will be separated and all the entity or all the branches will work independently with their own resources. So, in different functional uh, structure, resources may be, uh, may be uh, we can say distributed or we can say they can use uh, uh, togetherly, but in divisional structure, they have to, uh, I mean the resources uh, would be independently. That means, uh, there is no, uh, there is no, we can say that they cannot uh, use resources togetherly. Why? Because whole organization is divided on the basis of geographical area and they are, they are, they are not physically present in one location. Typically, divisions can be based on the geographical basis or the product or the service basis. Like if a whole organization is divided on the basis of geographical area or product or services basis, so we can call it divisional structure of an organization. This organization structure is typical for large companies that operate in different geographic areas or have separate smaller organizations to cover different types of product or market areas. This kind of organization is basically, uh, uh, basically found in large type of organization where the one entity has a number of branches in different different geographical area. There this kind of structure is most suitable. It can be costly because of its size and scope. This style uh, also risks duplicating activities and can be subject to miscommunication. As organization is large in nature, as uh, organization is uh, spread out uh, in a whole country, so obviously there might be a chances of, uh, of having this mis miscommunication and the duplication of activity. And yes, it is costly. Why? Because obviously the size of the organization is large in nature. This kind of uh, hierarchy can be made in uh, in divisional structure of the organization. Here you can see this hierarchy. Here whole organization is divided on the basis of product, product X, product Y, and product Z. So this kind of organization is known as divisional structure. And if the organization made on the basis of different geographical area, like different countries are having their different. I mean no, if not different countries. Or we can say that uh, if the organization. Uh, it deals multinationally, right? So in this way, in this way, we can say that divisional structure uh, would be there. So in this way here, like if organizations divided on the basis of country like U.S. division, European division, and Asian divisions, so obviously we can say that that is a divisional structure. Last one is metric structure of an organization. The metric structure is a combination of the divisional and functional structure. It is the combination of both functional and divisional. That means when both the uh, it is it is more complex, it is more complicated than rest of the structures because it is the combination of both div functional and divisional. Employees can be a part of functional group and also serve on a team that supports new product development. So in in this kind of organization, there is a um, there is a I mean each work of we can say that uh, it might be possible that each person uh, will have a two bosses, uh, one from the from the specialized uh, head or one from the uh, from that particular um, product head. We can say so. In there might be possibility that I mean the employees, like in metric structure. That's why we call it this metric structure is a temporary type of structure where both the both the uh, structure will be made at one at one time. Of period, employees can be part of functional group. That means employees can be a part of functional group, and at the same time they can work on new project. So if it, it if this kind of scenario uh, exists in the organization, so we can call it that metric structure is developed in the organization. Individuals are responsible both to their line manager and the project manager involved. Yes, we can say that here one person will have a two boss like if in this type of structure. Why? Because they have to deal with both the thing that means they have to they have to work with the functional group like both are responsible for line manager like functional group and at the same time if they are involved in some other project uh, along with the with the group. So, obviously, he has to report that particular project manager as well. So, here we can say that this is the disadvantage that there is no unity of command. That means, one person will have a two boss at one particular time period. That is why it is it is complicated in nature, but it is for the short term period. Once the product project is over, then obviously, that, that individual uh, has to command to a one person that is his immediate boss. 
the main disadvantage of this type of uh, organization is that it can create power struggles because most areas of the company will have a dual management as we know that uh, like uh, one person can be ha can have a uh, two bosses so obviously there is a dual management there might be a chances of conflict or there might be a chances in the mind of uh, employees mind that which which task is important for him that or whose guidance is important for him so this kind of confusion can be created in matrix types of structure so this kind of direct uh, this is the um, this is the diagram which is uh, which which is a part of matrix structure like here ceo and here this organization is divided on the basis of different area different functional area and and in at the same time this is also divided on the basis of product right so functional and divisional both are involved in matrix types of structure next topic is decentralization of authority decentralization is the systematic effort to delegate to the lowest level of authority except that which can be exercised at central points decentralization of authority is a process where senior person allocates responsibility to the lower level of people so this kind of process is known as decentralization of authority decentralization is actually an extension of the concept of delegation like earlier in the organization uh, delegation will be done by the top level people or higher authority to the lower level people or to the middle level people right but for the certain period of time but decentralization of authority is something where permanent departmentation uh, uh, is is basically they make uh, in the organization and permanent authority is uh, is given by the higher authority to the to the staff office or to the head of the departments so that they can work accordingly and according to their specialized skills right so this kind that's why we say that uh, this decentralization is a is an extension of concept of delegation decentralization is referred to as a form of an organizational structure where where there is the delegation of authority by the top management to the middle level and the lower level management in the organization as you know and i as i told you that yes this is the delegation of authority or decentralization is the decentralization of authority is the extension of delegation of authority where authority flows from top to middle and lower level management delegation refers to the assigning a portion of work and the associated responsibility by a superior to subordinate if i talk about the delegation meaning so delegation is what where top level manager or the higher authority assign or delegate the work to the or the portion of work to the middle level and lower level people right so this is called delegation if i talk about that why decentralization is important in the organization like as we know as as we know that organization earlier organization was based on the basis of centralization right but nowadays as um, as competition uh, uh, is there in the market so obviously we need specialized people we need and and workload is uh, is is getting increased so on the basis of that on the basis of uh, current scenario by seeing this current scenario this decentralization of authority is very important in today's world so that uh, so that uh, responsibility or the portion of work will be divided or allocated to the different departments and different departments or specialized people will done their work efficiently and effectively if i talk about decentralization why decentralization is important decentralization is important for rapid decision making as we have as we know that uh, organization is divided on the basis of different specialized area or we can say that departmentation um, uh, is is made in the organization right so we can say that if there is a people that means if if a uh, whole work is divided and allotted to the different different people so obviously the decision making will be done rapidly by the people why because division of work is there because people because whole work is divided and uh, allocated to the different different people so obviously the decision making would be fast why because there is no single person who is responsible for everything now the responsibility and the work is divided into the uh, certain people so yes so we can say that decision making would be prompt in in decentralization of authority next one is administrative development yes if i talk about uh, like um, uh, as we know like if in the decentralization of authority top higher authority allot allocate the or delegate the work 
to the head of the departments right so in this case in this case they this head of the department will also get the administrative uh, skills in the organization right so that means they will also learn they can they will also get the opportunity to learn that how to manage the whole organization right or we can say the small uh, small portion of organization so obviously if there is a decentralization of authority the administrative development would be there that means the things um, will be managed properly and people will also have a, or the head of the department will also get the executive skills uh, executive skills by maintaining whole department uh, properly development of executive skills like here we can say that administrative development means that all the things will be manageable or all the things will manage easily why because there is a decentralization why because there is a division of work there is no there is no one single person who is responsible for everything there is a certain people or there is a different departments who are responsible for their own work right so obviously administration will be effective in decentralization and once you allot the authority or the responsibility to the head of the departments or to the staff officer staff officer so obviously we can say that we can say that we can say that there is a we can say that the the head of the officers will get the uh, will uh, will have a better executive skills why because they will get the opportunity to to manage the whole department as their own skills and as their own wishes right so obviously executive skills will also develop uh, of uh, this of of every head of the departments next one is prompt growth promotes growth yes obviously if people are uh, if specialized people are managing their work properly so obviously growth is for sh uh, growth is uh, confirmed in the organization next one is higher control like higher control in what sense why because there is a direct communication between uh, head of the department and the subordinates like uh, and that means like head of the department or the staff officer directly communicate and interact with their group members so obviously there would be a higher control advantages of decentralization if i talk about advantages number one is reduces the burden of of top, top executives yes because there is uh, in decentralization authorities and responsibilities are divided into the certain department so obviously the burden will be reduced uh, from top executives next is facilitate diversification yes we can say that if uh, if if uh, div if the work is divided properly uh, to the certain uh, to the certain departments so obviously they can think of some diversification they can think of some innovation so obviously if decentralization is there so they can diversify their uh, uh, their organization in a better way next one is executive development yes if authority and responsibility is uh, uh, putting on the head of departments or uh, on the on the head of staff officers so obviously the executives will be developed uh, because they will get the scope and or the opportunity to to manage the whole department individually it promotes motivation yes if if the staff officers or the middle level people will get the opportunity to manage their own department on the basis i mean uh, by their own wishes by their own wish so obviously automatically the encouragement will be high uh, in them next one is better control and supervision and yes they have a opportunity to interact with their team members directly so obviously the bet control would be better and the super supervision would be better if i talk about disadvantage there are two disadvantage of uh, decentralization number one is uniform policy is not followed as department as uh, work is divided into the departments so different departments may have their own policies so obviously the uniformity may be uh, compromised compromised uh, Uh, through this decentralization of authority next one is problem in coordination as every department will have their own rules the specific rules so obviously the coordination problem can be arised in decentralization why because because every department uh, will have their own priority so uh, there might be possibility that they in this, in certain point of time they may not agree with each other's decision so obviously the coordination uh, problem in coordination can be possible in decentralization so this is the lecture which uh, which i have uh, explained you uh, today lecture uh, today so like we can revise one more time that what are the topics we have covered in today's lecture like 
start with the types of organization structure. So, we have uh, type organization structure we have read like what is organization structure? Organization structure is what it is the it is the framework of whole organization which clarifies the roles, the responsibilities, the authorities, the flow of information in the organization, right? So, organization structure is what it is the hierarchy, it is the hierarchical framework of organization. If I talk about why organization is important because it clarifies the authority and responsibility in the mind of uh, employees, so that so the so the transparency will get uh, uh, will uh, will be created in the organization, and it also avoids the overlapping and duplication of efforts in the organization. So these are the importance of organization structure which we have discussed in today's class. After that, we have discussed this uh, type of organization structure. Type of organization is divided into three parts functional, divisional, and metrics, right? If I talk about functional structure, that means where whole organization is divided on the basis of specialized area or specialized. Uh, specialized area or we can say specialization right like marketing hr finance production so if organization is divided on the basis of hr finance marketing so what is that that's a that's a uh, functional structure that means similar type of activity will be done at one particular department next one is divisional structure divisional structure means where whole organization is divided on the basis of geographical area or product or services that means if suppose if uh, uh, like uh, if i talk about suppose one organization and if if uh, suppose there he, he, the particular organization is dealing is deal with the is dealing with the different segments or different type of product and th that particular product he sell he uh, his uh, the, that organization uh, sell organization sell in one particular branch or in one particular geographical area so that whole organization uh, structure will be called as divisional structure so this is the diagram which i have shown you before also next one is matrix matrix is a complex type of structure it is a temporary type of structure where uh, there might be a chances where it is the combination of both functional and divisional right so there might be a chances of um, of having this metric structure of an organization at one particular time period right it might it, it is basically done when there is a new product or there when there is a uh, new project um, uh, is created for the organization where both divisional people and the uh, functional people has to work combinedly and where their employees will have a two bosses at one particular time of period right so metric structure so that's why we call it that it is temporary why we call it temporary because this kind of structure is made till the project has not finishes one once the project is finishes so obviously the metric structure will be uh, divided or will be uh, metric structure will be um, uh, converted into the functional and divisional this is the diagram of this matrix if i talk about this decentralization of authority yes we have discussed this decentralization of authority where whole the organization divides on the uh, into the departments and where the whole work is allotted allocated to the different departments or to the certain group of people so that process is known as what decentralization of authority like we have also discussed the importance of decentralization that why decentralization important in today's world so that specialization would be exist in the organization better prompt decision making would be there higher control uh, would be there or we can say that growth of the organization will also promote in the organization so this kind of importance is there that's why decentralization is important in today's world for the organization advantage also we have discussed disadvantage also we have discussed 